In this lesson, I'll show you how to calculate the tension in the ropes. The question reads, hang a 50 kilogram mass with ropes making angles 30 degrees and 45 degrees as shown below. Calculate the tension in the ropes. The first thing that I want to mention is that there are three forces here, and they're all acting on this knot right here. The first force is the force due to gravity, and that is going directly down. We also have a force which is a pulling force called tension going in this direction and one that is going in that direction. Because this mass isn't moving, it's at equilibrium. So the x components of each of these vectors and the y components of each of these vectors need to sum up to zero. Therefore, what I will do is draw this out on an xy plane and show you what to do from there. So here's an xy plane and we have a force going in this direction. It makes 45 degrees with the top, but if this is 45 degrees, and if we were to draw a parallel line along this axis, that means that this is 45 degrees as well. So I'll write down here 45 degrees, and if I were to draw this vector, where it starts at the center, it makes 30 degrees with this line, therefore this is also 30. That rule is called alternating angles, and we use it for parallel lines. All right, and we also have a vector that is going directly downwards. So we don't know the force, or the magnitude of this force. I'll just call it T1 for now, for tension. And we don't know the magnitude of that force either, I'll call it T2. But we do know the magnitude of this force, and we can find it by using the formula for force, mass times acceleration. The mass is 30 kilograms, and the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, and that's a constant at 9.8 meters per second squared. Let's multiply those out so we can actually get the magnitude. We get 294, 294 newtons down. Let's begin by finding the x component of T2. So I'll write down x components. I'm making a chart here, and for T2, to find the x component, which is this part of the vector. Remember, the vector can be broken down into two parts, the x and y component. To get that part, which is what we're interested in, we will have to use trigonometric functions. So we have the adjacent relative to 30 degrees, and we also want to find out the tension in the rope, so we will associate it with the hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. Remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'll write down cosine at an angle of 30 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse T2. Solving for ADJ, which is the x component, we get T sub 2 times cosine 30, and that's equal to the x component for T sub 2. If I want to find the x component for T sub 1, this one right here, we are interested in this part that I'm highlighting. So I will say cosine at an angle of 45 degrees is equal to the adjacent over T sub 1. Again, solving for ADJ, I get T sub 1 cosine 45 degrees. Now something important to mention is that because I'm using cosine in the second quadrant, the x component has to be negative. And the reason why is because I'm using an acute reference angle as opposed to the actual angle being 135. If I were to use cosine 135, I would not have to make this answer by default negative. My calculator would automatically give me a negative output. So let me repeat that, if you're using an acute reference angle, you have to make sure that you follow the cast rule. The cast rule says that all trig functions are positive, only sine is positive, only tangent is positive here, and cosine is positive there. And so because only sine is positive in the second quadrant, the x component for this vector should be negative. All right, now we have to find the x component of this vector that's going directly down, but if you ever have a vector that's going directly down or up, the x component is automatically zero. Okay, so we will be adding this plus this plus zero for that third force 
which I'll just call f. Okay, so the x component of f is zero. Now, if you want to find this more technically, you can write down the force being 294 times cosine at 270 degrees, and this should give you zero. Okay, so that's the technical way of finding the x component, but that's the more logical approach. So we'll be adding this plus this plus that. Now we have to find the y components of each of these. We start with the y component of t2. So this time we are looking for that part and using 30 as our reference angle, we have opposite and hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse is sine. Sine at 30 is the opposite over hypotenuse, t sub 2. Solving for opposite, we get t sub 2 times sine 30, and that's equal to the opposite. So when you're dealing with the y components, you're dealing with sine. Next, we'll get the y component for this part. We have sine at an angle of 45 degrees is equal to the opposite, and we're dealing with tension one now. So again, T1 sine 45 is equal to the opposite. Eventually, we will be adding this and this together, but we have one more y component to consider, which is the y component of vector f. The y component of this vector is 294, or negative 294, because it's going directly down. Up is positive, down is negative in this case. So I have minus 294, and of course you can figure this out as well systematically. If you were to write down 294 sine at an angle of 270, and that would give you negative 294. So we'll be adding these three together, and they should all equal to zero. Let's begin with this column. Let's add t sub 2 cosine 30. And we're adding this, so it becomes minus t1 cosine 45, and that's equal to zero. For this column, we'll have t sub 2 sine 30 plus t sub 1 sine 45 plus negative 294 or negative 294 is equal to zero. Somehow we need to find out what t sub 1 and t sub 2 are and we will be doing this by solving a system of equations much the same way that you would solve a linear system. So the very first step is to bring that over so that I have t sub 2 cosine 30 is equal to positive t sub 1 cosine 45. Notice that it became positive because we moved it over. And then I'll solve for t sub 1, or you can solve for t sub 2 if you like. It's up to you. So solving for t sub 1, I divide both sides of the equation by cosine 45. And this leaves me to t sub 1. I'll take this expression now and throw it in there so that I have a brand new equation that only deals with t sub 2. All right, so this term and that term are like terms because they are both t sub 2 related. I will take sine 30 plus all of this stuff. So in parentheses, and make sure that your calculator is in degrees. If it's not, you're going to get a completely wrong answer. Cosine 30, sine 45, divided by cosine 45. And we end up with this value. So 1.36, let's carry some more decimals, 60 t sub 2 is equal to 294. We divide both sides by what we found earlier. So 294 divided by what I just found, and I get 215 newtons. So that's the tension of this vector. To find the tension of that vector, we're practically done. We take that value and substitute it right here. Okay? So this value that's on our screen times cosine of 30 
divided by cosine of 45. And that gives us 263, 263 newtons for this vector. And there you have it. That is how to calculate the tension in ropes.